The next item of business is a debate on motion 14405 in the name of Richard Leonard on Keep the Monklands in Monklands. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Richard Leonard to speak to and move the motion for up to eight minutes. Mr Leonard. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. We are forced to bring this motion before Parliament because we fear that a great injustice may be served on the people of Lanarkshire. And we bring this motion before Parliament because we believe that it is the job of this Parliament and the elected representatives in it to speak up to stop a grave error. A grave error which would be felt for generations to come if we sit back and allow it to be made. The decision to build a new hospital, a state-of-the-art hospital for present and future needs, and to replace and not simply upgrade the existing Monklands University Hospital has been widely welcomed. But the health board consultation, which closed last week over what form and critically where the new hospital is to be built, has been roundly condemned. The health board plead that what they have done is simply to follow Scottish government guidance. In that guidance, it clearly states that, and I quote, the Scottish people and the staff of the NHS are co-owners in the NHS. And it clearly states that the Health Board has a duty to ensure that information presented to the public must be, and I quote, balanced. And that is why we have brought this motion before Parliament today, because the Health Board has undertaken a flawed process with flawed logic. It is true that the people of Lanarkshire have been informed but they have neither been meaningfully engaged nor genuinely consulted. And I would go further. There has been nothing less than a cynical attempt to railroad through the board's preferred option of closing the Monklands Hospital down and relocating its services to a new site in the village of Garkosh in the teeth of widespread public opposition. Public meetings were not meaningful consultations, but one-sided presentations on the case for Garkosh. People left those meetings angry and frustrated. And before that, we had in June of this year an options appraisal process in which there was a desperate shortage of patient and public voices. The people who took part in this options appraisal have been described by NHS Lanarkshire as, and I quote, delegates. My question to the Health Board is, if they were delegates, who delegated them? Were they mandated in advance? And have they reported back on their decision? Because according to the guidance they were supposed to be, and I quote again, health service users, patients, staff, members of the public, carers, volunteers, and the voluntary organizations which represent them. But the composition of the people involved in this options appraisal appears to have been dominated by NHS Lanarkshire employees and senior ones at that. So whilst the surgeons and the consultants may have been consulted, what about the porters? What about the domestics? What about the catering workers? What about the lowest paid workers, many of them shift workers, most of who live and work locally? And what about the patients? What about the service users? And what about the carers? So my question to the minister is this. If this exercise is in line with Scottish Government guidance, then the guidance is so much waste paper. And if it is, isn't it about time that the Scottish Government started laying down some tougher rules which ensure that the democratic will of local communities is respected? Or on the other hand, if this exercise is not in line with the guidance, then surely the time has come 
for the government to swiftly and directly intervene. Presiding officer, as a member of this parliament for Central Scotland, in August, I initiated an online petition. The petition called on the Scottish Government to step in to ensure that the new hospital is built on the site of the existing hospital. To date, it has gathered over 5,000 signatures. This is the option which the majority of the people want. And so what is the Health Board's response? They say, and I quote, there are significant challenges in delivering key adjacencies within the identified expansion zone. And the guidelines stipulate that everything is meant to be easy to understand. They also say that there is potential for complex wayfinding associated with building over different levels. This is not transparent, this is opaque. And we are told time and time again that construction work on the current site would lead to the temporary loss of parking spaces. And of course, this is a consideration. But surely our commitment to public health and the great legacy of Anaira and Bevan and the founding principles of our National Health Service demands that we look beyond short-term car parking difficulties. <laughs> what about the long-term health benefits for the people of the Monklands and a health service which is accessible and free at the point of need. At a public meeting that I attended in Airdrie Town Hall, the audience faced such a hard sell to close down the Airdrie Town Centre Hospital and move to the village of Gartkosh that at one point we were told that it took less time to get from the Monklands to Gartkosh than it took to get from the Monklands to the Monklands. Do the health board take the people as gullible? Why on earth? If the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, newly built in Glasgow, can be built on the site of the Southern General Hospital in Glasgow, why on earth can't we build the new Monklands Hospital on the site of the old Monklands Hospital? The Health Board accepts that this is possible. The people now want them to make it happen. The Maggie Centre, the Lanarkshire Beetson, are co-located on the existing site in Airdrie both state-of-the-art, both less than five years old, both a good reason to stay. The town centre first principle, which is supposed to inform decisions like this, has not been factored in by the health board, and that's another good reason to stay. The outline business case for the project will be considered by the board of NHS Lanarkshire at its meeting next month. So time is running out. But there still is time for the Scottish Government to intervene. The Government's own guidance says that the consultation process needs to demonstrate that the NHS listens, is supportive and genuinely takes account of views and suggestions. So let us today hear that this Government is prepared to step in, to stop this closure before it's too late, before a great injustice is committed, before a grave error is made, and instruct the board to keep the new Monklands Hospital in the Monklands. In the name of the people we are here to represent, I move the motion in my name. I now call Claire Hockey to speak to and move Amendment 14405.1 for up to six minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I welcome this debate on an important issue for the many people who use and value the services delivered by Monklands Hospital. I recognise there is a strength of feeling in the local Airdrie community about the future access to and provision of hospital services. And I want to make one point absolutely clear to members and to local people who use the highly valued services at Monklands Hospital. No final decision has been taken by the NHS board on the preferred option for a new or refurbished Monklands Hospital. We recognise that the hospital is more than 40 years old. Whilst there has been and continues to be significant investment in the hospital to maintain high quality patient care. The current facilities don't have the right layout to ensure an ideal model of care in line with best modern clinical practice. And that's why the government has been clear that we support NHS Lanarkshire in bringing forward the proposals to replace or refurbish Monklands Hospital for the benefit of local people. 
We note these plans will ensure the new hospital will have state-of-the-art facilities and provide a range of specialist services for patients across Lanarkshire, as well as continue to be the local hospital for the people living within the Monklands catchment area. It's also important to note that the new hospital will retain an A&E department for the benefit of local people, along with its key, key support services. Any decision on the location of the, hospital, of the new hospital's location must also, as a priority, help to reduce the level of health inequalities within the Monklands area and across Lanarkshire. In terms of the strategic context, the Monklands of the future will support the required clinical model to meet the objectives set out in the board's healthcare strategy, Achieving Excellence, which is consistent with the ambitions and aims of the Scottish Government as set out in the National Delivery Plan for Health and Social Care. Sustained investment in our health infrastructure is vital to ensure that Scotland's health service can continue to provide a high standard of care. In the Government's forthcoming capital investment strategy, which will be brought to Parliament before the end of the financial year, we will set out the further steps that we will take. Presiding Officer, I would like to offer members a brief update on NHS Lanarkshire's progress with the important Monklands replacement or refurbishment project. In June, local stakeholders took part in an appraisal of the non-financial benefits of the following options. Ongoing maintenance of the current hospital in Airdrie, a refurbishment of the current hospital, a new build on the existing site, or a new build in Gatkosh or Glen Mavis. In line with national guidance on informing and engaging local people on potential changes to their healthcare services, NHS Lanarkshire then conducted formal public consultations on the above options between the 15th of July and the 15th of October. NHS Lanarkshire has assured us that they will carefully consider all the responses to the consultation and rigorously evaluate all the options before the board decides on a preferred option. Their consideration will in, in, just a, in just a moment, their consideration will be informed by a report on their public consultation from the Independent Scottish Health Council. Elaine Smith. I thank the Minister for taking intervention, so perhaps you can tell us why they went out so vigorously promoting Gatkosh, which is not in the Monklands area, as a preferred option. Perhaps you could tell us that, and perhaps you could also tell us who these stakeholders were, because they weren't the public. Claire Hockey. Um, well, I, I don't know if Elaine Smith is aware, but there were actually public engagement events, including one in my own constituency. Um, the role of the Scottish Health Council in this instance is to quality assure the board's public consultation process in line with the national guidance issued in 2010 on informing, engaging and consulting people in developing health and community services. The Council's report will be published in due course and it is incumbent on the board to demonstrate that it has properly dispensed its statutory duty under the 2004 NHS Reform Scotland Act to involve patients, carers and the wider community in developing the healthcare services that they provide for them. The board must be able to demonstrate that any decision on a preferred option has been meaningfully informed by the views of patients, carers, staff, elected representatives and other local stakeholders. The choice of location must also take full account of, the other, of other factors such as the view of staff, accessibility, transport links, travel times and the best return to the NHS in terms of patient care. Presiding officer, ministers are aware of some of the concerns that have been raised by both elected members and local people about the quality of the engagement and involvement activity undertaken by the Health Board. In particular, concerns have been expressed about the quality of information and analysis undertaken by the Board and about the robustness of their options appraisal process, which led to Gatkosh being identified as the highest scoring option for the site of the new build replacement hospital. I can assure members that we have noted these concerns. We are clear that it is critical that the Health Board comes to a robust, evidence-based decision in such cases, in line with national guidance and practice, and as, no, and as meaningfully informed by the views of local stakeholders. We agree that all efforts must be made to move work on this important development forward, whilst meaningfully engaging with and ensuring the confidence of local people and their representatives. And that's why on the, the minister is closing. Uh, that's why, in the completion of this formal consultation process, the health secretary asked the director general of health and social care to liaise with the chief executive of NHS Lanarkshire to discuss the need for the board to undertake further analysis and engagement with local stakeholders to explore the concerns raised in, uh, in more detail 
and this discussion will take place by the end of the week. President Officer, I've set out Minister's clear expectations that NHS Lanarkshire's choice of a preferred option for the location of the replacement of Monklands Hospital must be based on a robust evidence in line with national guidance and best practice and is meaningfully informed by the views of local stakeholders. And President Officer, I move Amendment S5M 1445.1 in my name. I now call Miles Briggs for up to five minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to speak in today's debate about what is a major issue for residents across Lanarkshire. And I was pleased to visit Monklands Hospital in May of this year to meet with both staff and management at the hospital. I was hugely impressed with the hard work, enthusiasm and dedication of all NHS staff working there. And it was clear to me that the hospital enjoyed widespread and deep-rooted community support. And that's something I think which we should all be working to protect and take forward. What really struck me and has stayed with me since on that visit to Monklands was a nurse I met who just finished her shift and was staying on um, to be with her mother's elderly friend who was expected to die that evening. For me, that really showed how those who work in our NHS in Monklands really put the community first. Deputy Presiding Officer, it is this sort of love and care which I think we don't often have the opportunity uh, to highlight in Parliament and which I think is important when we take any opportunity to actually do so. The news, as Richard Leonard has said, that Monklands is to be uh, rebuilt or, or modernised as a hospital building is, of course, hugely welcome. But it's vital that the choice of location for that replacement building is backed by local people who will be using the hospital facilities for decades to come. Having spoken to a number of council colleagues in North Lanarkshire and members representing the area, I fully recognise the significant public concerns about the highest scoring option site that has emerged at Gartkosh and growing concerns around the consultation process which saw that option emerge as the likely preferred site. I think it's important to note that these serious concerns are being expressed by local elected uh, representatives, representatives from across the political spectrum and perhaps more importantly by local residents in Lanarkshire themselves. Many local people feel very strongly that this, and understandably, want that they and this want to see a new hospital building that is both locally accessible as possible and therefore constructed within the Monklands. Many people believe that Gar the Gartkosh site is too near Glasgow and has not, and not enough uh, has been taken to consider the current Monklands site itself. Public transport links from Airdrie and other nearby villages to Gartkosh are very poor already and too much importance seems to have already been attached to rail services to Gartkosh when a mere 4% of people use the train to get to Monklands Hospital at present. And the consultation also provided very little information about the Glen Mavis option even though this option clearly has local support and clear local strengths. Presiding officer, it is the responsibility of NHS Lanarkshire to address these concerns and, more, and most importantly, the concerns of local people and their elected representatives. And, yes. Elaine Smith. Thank you. I thank the member for taking the intervention. He will be aware that there was a complete cross-party campaign to keep the A&E from being downgraded and keep it in the Monklands community. So would you now agree with me that it would be absolutely outrageous if the SNP government were to sit back and allow the whole hospital to move out of the Monklands area? I think, I think what's key in this debate is we can all accept and welcome the fact that this hospital needs to be upgraded and that's something we should look forward to and all the services which have been retained there are actually transferred to the new site, be it at Monklands or a new preferred option when that's taken forward. But I, I totally accept that it's clear that serious questions are now being asked around the consultation process, particularly the removal of potential other location options which were made available and these issues I do believe need to be addressed. But we are talking about a major investment of perhaps around 400 to 600 million pounds for a major new build hospital that will so serve the area for decades to come and it's vital therefore that a new hospital is developed on the best site available and that this choice enjoys as much pu public support as is possible and I know from other decisions taken in the past in other health boards including my own that it's important that we future-proof the site as well. Potential future NHS developments and investments is important, and developing a site that cannot then provide flexibility, I don't think is good for patients or the future sustainability of our NHS. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I hope that NHS Lanarkshire will be listening closely to today's debate in Parliament, and I thank the Labour Party for bringing it forward. And 
what is important now is that NHS Lanarkshire take on board and respond to all the concerns that are being raised by members of all parties to, in, this debate, in this debate and decide whether it needs to pause and reconsider the consultation, consultation process to date. We need to get the location of the new Monklands right and above all we need to make sure that the needs and interests of all the people of Lanarkshire are put at the heart of this decision. Thank you. Alison Johnson, up to four minutes please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It is important that we come to this debate and consider these proposals with an open mind. We can't always allow the history of service changes in a particular place to shape our future decisions, though I appreciate that that is easier said than done. And I also appreciate that colleagues across all parties have at different points and in different ways fought hard to maintain and protect the Monklands and the excellent local healthcare people benefit from there. Looking at the information outlined in the consultation on these plans, it's clear that a total rebuild is needed to provide the high quality facilities people deserve. It would be unthinkable for people to lose such quality of service. And I'm extremely conscious that we spend a significant part of our time in Parliament scrutinising service change proposals and that time and time again, patients and residents are forced to point out that longer journey times are one of their main concerns. Getting to hospital by public transport can be painfully difficult. Even small relocations can cause communities real problems when they don't line up with decent transport routes. And this process also speaks volumes about the generally inadequate state of a lot of public transport in this country, how slow it is to change to people's needs and frankly, how low our expectations are of what it should provide. So it's crucial that we get the site of our hospitals right that when new facilities are developed, they have the space, uh, as Miles Briggs pointed out, and the capacity they need with room to expand if necessary, and that they offer a good environment to patients and their families, and of course, the NHS staff who work within them. New public transport routes and other planning decisions should then fit around that. It goes without saying that it would be unacceptable for any aspect of the current service at Monklands to be downgraded in any way whatsoever as part of that, that, that process. And I'm glad that the government's amendment speaks directly to those concerns, reiterating commitment to its a &E department and specialist services. Yeah, Briefly, I Elaine Smith. Minutes. I thank the member, but I wonder if she'd agree with me that committing to an a &E department and then moving it right out of Monklands is no commitment at all for the people of Monklands. Alison Johnson. It is clear that people in this area, in the wider area, need access to a top class, first class A&E department. But there's further information I'd like regarding future plans for the existing hospital site. If new facilities were to be built elsewhere, could the minister please address that in closing? How could that site be used to the best effect for people in the local area? But today, Parliament surely would be offering its judgment on this service change without sight of a report on the public consultation, which ended just 10 days ago. The report hasn't been published yet. And apparently, I believe there have been over 600 responses to the consultation. I personally would prefer to be able to take those views into consideration because rightly, we criticise the government as we've criticised health boards in the past when consultations have been flawed and people's views and responses haven't been given appropriate regard. So we can't rush past that consultation process which is in train at the moment ourselves. And the board hasn't met to decide on a preferred option for the outline business case. This isn't due to happen until next month. I appreciate, presiding officer, that my colleagues are acting out of genuine concern for people and patients in this area. But I am mindful too that the longer timescales anticipated for rebuilding on the existing site would leave patients without a viable local service for longer, possibly many years longer, as well as putting more pressure on other hospitals in that time since they'd have to absorb displaced demands. It is crucial that the very best decision is made for the long-term future of this hospital, and this can only be achieved with a clearer, more detailed view of the potential advantages of building on all sites and by taking the views of patients and residents into proper account. The government's motion does not make any determination, amendment I should say, on the ultimate location for the hospital and it does stress that the views of patients and other factors like travel must be taken fully into account and for that reason I am minded to support the government's amendment today. Thank you. Alex Cole-Hamilton, up to four minutes please. 
Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to the Labour Party for bringing this motion to Parliament today. Monklands General is not a hospital I know well. I've never used its services, but its reputation very much precedes it. And I think that it's been the subject of many heated debates and questions and campaigns in this place. I think that's testimony to the, how well regarded it is by the communities it serves and the calibre of its excellent staff. But above all that, I understand the drivers behind both the reasoning for the Labour Party bringing this today and indeed the depth of feeling that exists in the community about the location of this hospital. I see it resonate with many of the campaigns that I've been involved with around health services uh, in the areas I represent. So I understand that very much. It is a dynamic and well-regarded institution. It has substantial throughput. Um, and I think one of the things that really resonates with local people who have backed this campaign is not just the certainty it provides of where it is, but the heritage it has and its place in the local firmament. It speaks, I think, this process so far, and we've heard a lot of that already in the debate this, this afternoon, speaks to a wider catalogue of decisions taken in major service redesign, both by territorial health boards, but also by Scottish ministers, which is, may well be underpinned by theoretical arguments, spreadsheets, and arguments around economies of scale, which look good on paper, but fundamentally fail uh, to carry with it the support of the communities that they serve and are wholly adrift of the views of those local communities they serve as well. And I remind Parliament of what happened uh, with the service redesign around cleft services, which actually saw uh, Felicity Mahendele lost to the profession as a result of that, and I think uh, has diminished our offer to patients in that regard. Hospitals will always evince strong emotions locally. They are, in many cases, central to the fabric of the communities they serve. And that's because they don't exist in isolation. Many local businesses and voluntary groups are very close ties with those hospitals and depend on their location for their viability. They define public transport links and in many ways they impact on the roads and traffic profiles of the communities they serve. Now my support for the Labour uh, motion tonight would be harder were these communities pitted against one another but they aren't. In fact many residents in Garkosh have already voiced concerns about pressure on parking and traffic flow and, uh, and other issues like that. And some elected members have also cited uh, things like proximity to gas mains and, and the rest of it um, as aspects of the unsuitability of the Garkosh site. As I said at the start of this debate, presiding officer, this is not a hospital I use. It's not something I'm very familiar with, but I have absolute solidarity with the community campaign that has sprung up around it and its perseverance in this locale because I think that it speaks to this much wider problem that we have in Scotland right now in the delivery of our health services, that the, where we locate services and how we design and redesign services to answer the needs of the citizens we all are elected here to serve um, is fundamentally uh, flawed because it is focused very much around what looks good on paper and what doesn't work necessarily as well for communities in the areas they are uh, there to, to serve. So I welcome the Labour motion today and assure them of our support for it tonight. Thank you. Uh, we now move to the open speeches of up to four minutes, please. We're tight for time with a second debate this afternoon. And I call Elaine Smith to be followed by Alex Neil. <clears throat> Thank you, presiding officer. Um, over a decade ago, I campaigned with colleagues from across the political spectrum to stop NHS Lanarkshire downgrading our local A&E at Monklands General Hospital. And the first thing that I did when I was re-elected in 2007, straight after being sworn in, was to go out of here and to lodge motion S3M0002, calling for a reversal of the decision to downgrade Monklands. And as they are fond of reminding us, the SNP government then instructed NHS Lanarkshire to do just that. And at that time, Nicola Sturgeon, MSP, Health Minister at the time, concluded that the Health Board did not give sufficient weight to the concerns expressed by local people. So fast forward to the present, and Monkless Hospital is now facing a much worse threat, the removal of the whole hospital from the Monklands area. And I can assure the First Minister that yet again, sufficient weight has not been given to the concerns of local people. The so-called consultation, which closed a week past on Monday whilst the, the Parliament was in recess and during the school holidays, um, and to make matters worse, an additional paper suddenly appeared with a week to go until the closing date. 
And I have to say, President Officer, the whole process has been flawed from the start, with NHS Lanarkshire heavily promoting the preferred option of building out with Monklands at Gartcosh. Even the option appraisal exercise was weighted in favour of Gartcosh and involved far more staff and professionals than patients or public. And it was also very clear from the public presentation, not meeting, that I attended, that the Gatkosh site was being heavily promoted, with the other sites, in particular the current location, being negatively portrayed. And I have to say to the Minister, these were not inclusive public meetings. They were a PR exercise and they were designed to promote the Gatkosh option and undersell the other options. So, I'm sorry, but no one in my community, in Monklands, is going to believe the Minister that the decision has not already been taken. But of course, the Minister can overturn that. Indeed, on the actual site, building has happened in recent years. We've heard that. We've got new theatres. We've got the Bateson and Maggie centres. And we've got investment in the A&E. The current site has many advantages. It's in a very central location. It's embedded within the Monklands community. It's got access to well-established transport links, car, bus, train. And we also know that far more staff live closer to the current hospital. And that's not only an important factor in terms of issues like childcare and additional travel costs, but it raises issues around, for example, providing services in bad weather. During the heavy snow of last year, we should commend the many staff who walked into their work, something that is not going to be possible if the hospital is moved out of its central location. Over the years, Monklands residents have lost acute medical services such as paediatrics, inpatient dermatology beds, gynaecology and orthopaedics. And living in the community, I have no doubt that the people of Monklands are deeply concerned about losing their local hospital provision in the heart of our community. Presiding officer, with the, so uh, with the closing of the so-called public consultation, it is time for this parliament to step in and show support for the people of the Monklands. And by the way, I understand that the contributions are not being made public by the health board. So we'll just put that on the record. In last week's Adrian Coatbridge advertiser, Alec Neil MSP, is quoted as saying, we must ensure that Gatkosh gets the kibosh. But Fulton McGregor has not publicly supported keeping the Monklands in the Monklands. Both of them can show support today by voting against this government's anti-Monklands amendment and for Labour's motion. Let's just be very, very clear. Any MSP who supports the government amendment, which talks of the catchment area, is given a green light to Monklands Hospital being removed from the Monklands. Absolutely. Of course, a new substantially upgraded hospital is needed, but I believe it should be on the current site. The Scottish Government is going to have the final say, or indeed they can call it in. They're investing heavily in the new provision, but the amendment today is worrying. It doesn't support keeping the Monklands in the Monklands. So I call on them, having previously stopped the removal of a &E services from the Monklands, to now step in and stop the removal of the whole hospital from the Monklands. If members want that too, then they need to vote against the amendment and vote for Labour's motion. Alex Neil, followed by Alison Harris. Presiding officer, thank you very much indeed. I speak as a local member, local MSP for Airdrie and Shots, which includes the Monklands uh, Hospital. And can I say, as well as myself, Neil Gray, the MP for Airdrie and Shots, we have spearheaded the campaign against what I regard as a stupid decision by NHS Lanarkshire to make Gat Kosh uh, the preferred site for the new hospital. Unfortunately, that's not a sentiment that's universally agreed. Uh, let me quote this. Uh, I am delighted that Gat Kosh has been shortlisted for a proposed new build, uh, a build uh, of Monklands Hospital. Gat Kosh is a good choice. Hugh Gaffney, Labour MP for Coat Bridge. So, the Labour Party needs to sort out its position, as usual, is trying to face two ways at once. Now, we are, I speak as a local member, presiding officer, and I'm only facing one way, and that is no to Gart Kosh, and no on a number of uh, points. First of all, the option appraisal that's been referred to, and I say this as a former health secretary, with the greatest respect for those people who work in the Monklands Hospital. But at that option appraisal, there were 53 people at it. 34 of them were senior employees of NHS Lanarkshire. Only 16 of them were patients. Five of those 16 came from South Lanarkshire. The other 11 from North Lanarkshire. But the health board can only identify one patient who lives in the Monklands catchment area. One patient. 
out of 255,000 patients living in the Monklands area, and they only identified one to turn up at the scoring event. And then they have the cheek to say they have stuck by the process laid down by the government. There is no way they have stuck by the process. And it's not just the participation, presiding officer. It's the way that whole scoring system was rigged to get the answer the senior people in the health board wanted against the wishes of the majority of people in North Lanarkshire and the vast majority in my constituency. And the information on which they scored was inaccurate, misleading, unbalanced, and very often bordering on deliberately being economical with the truth. There is no way it could be described as a fair and objective exercise. And the top priority for the health board in their own document is reducing health inequalities in Lanarkshire. If this hospital goes to Gat Kosh, far from reducing inequalities, it's going to make them much worse than what they are. And that is why Neil Gray and I have submitted a petition with 6,000 people to NHS Lanarkshire. But unfortunately, presiding officer, NHS Lanarkshire act as though they're deaf. They're not listening to the people. The people told them the A&E closure was the wrong thing to do. And the people are telling them putting the new hospital in Gatkosh is the worst thing to do. And I agree with the people and the evidence agrees with the people. So I say, presiding officer, it is time for an independent review of the process, the information, and the decision to make Gatkosh the preferred site. This cannot be allowed to stand. It would be a betrayal of the people of the Monklands if Gatkosh was the site for a new hospital. And unlike the Labour Party, I can say that on behalf of all the SNP representatives for Airdrie and Shorts. Alison Harris, followed by Neil Finlay. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Monklands and Airdrie was the first new hospital built in Scotland in the post-World War II era. The hospital's roots go back to 1887, when Sir John Wilson, a late 19th century businessman and local politician, bought the Airdrie House estate. He then went on to bequeath the land to the people of Airdrie and it became the local maternity hospital and later what was to be known as Monklands Hospital. After some 40 years, there has been a significant increase in the number of people living in the Monklands area, so it was undoubted that at some stage, Monklands Hospital would become no longer totally fit for purpose. And it's fair to say that the hospital currently has become less fit for the modern day. Emotions and feelings do run high. Hospitals belong to communities, not only the patients who attend these hospitals, but the staff who work and dedicate their lives to looking after our sick. So it's no small wonder that emotions in Monklands are running high about the potential closure of its hospital and reciting. I welcome this debate today. And whilst I'm led to believe that the Health Board have not yet fully made up their minds regarding the location of Monklands, there is significant evidence and other factors that now must be taken into the overall consideration for its future. There is no dispute that there should be a new modernised Monklands Hospital. I do not agree with Richard Leonard and Elaine Smith that by simply building on the current site of the hospital that the problems will be solved. Apart from the considerable length of time to dismantle the old hospital and rebuild a new one, whilst currently operating an efficient hospital on the same site, which already lacks space, in my view, is simply not practical. I appreciate it's the passion surrounding the current location and logically why people think it makes sense to take out the old and bring in the new. Fourth Valley Hospital in Falkirk had a very similar experience. There was Falkirk Royal and there was Stirling Royal, yet you were either a Falkirk Bairn or a Son of the Rock. And discussions about what was the best site to replace these two hospitals went on for 25 years. The new Fourth Valley Hospital has now been there for, well, I think about eight years now. Personally, where I do agree is that the Monklands is an Airdrie. 
and to start looking at a site in Gart Kosh sees the potential move to a G postcode. There is an argument that Gart Kosh could technically be in Glasgow and not North Lanarkshire. Therefore, a move of this nature would and could benefit the people of Glasgow, but be of a huge disadvantage to those who live in the Monklands. Not only would travelling be problematic for a lot of the elderly and infirm in the local area, but we have to consider the emergency ambulance transfer times and the additional travel time that this would impose on an already long hours that staff actually do work. As, if you just let me finish this, it's in my region and I want to try and finish it, but at the end. As I was no, going to be speaking can't. I'm this afraid you debate, can't. You're in your last minute. Right, oh, ah, right, OK. I actually looked back to find out when the hospital was originally opened. It was then that I discovered the story behind Sir John Wilson bequeathing land to the people of Airdrie for what would become the Monklands Hospital as we know it. How fitting was it to learn that some 130 years later, a similar gesture from a local Airdrie businessman to sell a suitable location in Glen Mavis for the potential to build a new Monklands Hospital for the princely sum of one pound. This huge gesture should be given serious thought. Glen Mavis is a more central location. It is local. It keeps the hospital within the heart of the community. This is a serious alternative and one that I would urge the Health Board to take on board. Now is the time to go back and have a significant rethink. Don't take choice away from local people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the opening will be followed by Fulton McGregor and its four-minute speech is to be taken intervention. I'm afraid you have to absorb it. Mr. Thanks, Finley. President Officer. Monklands is uh, not in my region, but I've had constituents make representations to me as they work there, and some uh, have indeed been treated there. And uh, it's a hospital like so many across Scotland that was built by the Labour government to sell, sell, serve the health needs of growing uh, uh, communities, and in that particular area, a growing industrial town. Yet the recent history of the hospital has been one of insecurity and indecision that has left uh, local voices marginalised by the health board, a very familiar tale indeed. There are uh, many reasons why that is the case, but we today have to concern ourselves with uh, how we answer the question of where the new hospital will be uh, located. The people in that area have had to put up with repeated instability in recent years, not least when services have been taken away from the hospital, forcing patients to travel further afield for treatment, a serious problem especially for those reliant on public transport, a situation reflected indeed in my own area where the same is happening at St John's Hospital where families and children are having to travel up to 30 miles because the service is not on a 24-7 basis. And all too often these decisions are made with no prior consultation with staff or the people who fund the NHS, the taxpayer, the patients, the people. In Monklands, uh, as people have said, we've seen dermatology, gynaecology, paediatrics lost. We see beds cut from 527 to 477, despite population growth and despite the population getting older. And at what point does the downgrading of a hospital end and when will certainty over the future of it be settled? I hope uh, we are all agreed that the community needs a new and well-resourced hospital and the location has to reflect the concerns and wishes of the local population. It is not the role of government nor NHS boards to dictate to communities when they have shown a clear and strong preference. And indeed, I would suggest that that goes against the very essence of the Chief Medical Officer's principle of realistic medicine. A new hospital must continue to serve the people of these communities and be built where the community wants it to stay. And that is the site where it has always been. I do think it is a bizarre argument from the Green Party who are arguing for a hospital to be built on a greenfield site when it could be built on an existing brownfield site. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Well, that out of town site, let's call it. Not at the moment. We, sh we should remember also that Monklands is the largest employer, largest employer in an area of multiple deprivation, providing an economic boost to the community that needs it. That is a very important thing. Um, Richard Leonard has secured a petition with over 5,000 signatures. I'm delighted if Alec Neil has done the same. That's good. That's good that people are making that point. And we must, these, these must be taken into account uh, over and above the so-called local consultation because it clear, it's clear that people have a clear preference. 
Uh, my Labour colleagues have been pressing this issue for many years, and it's concerning that we've spent so much time deliberately deliberating these matters rather than getting on with the job of creating an NHS fit for the 21st century, not just in Lanarkshire, but across the whole of Scotland. Uh, hospital instability has become a common problem in Scotland, as I, I know only too well in my area, and it is unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable. People in Lanarkshire de deserve certainty about the situation, just as the people in West Lothian deserve certainty about theirs. Presiding officer, with the future of their hospitals secured, they can start planning for the future and feel confident that they have their services pr protected. That's why I will be supporting the position put forward by Richard Leonard today. Thank you very much. I call Fulton McGregor to fall by Graham Simpson. Mr McGregor, please. Thank you, presiding officer, for the opportunity to speak in this debate. And as someone who grew up in the area of Coke Bridge, right next to where the Monkland sits, it really is a privilege to speak in a debate about a hospital I know well and its future in serving my constituents in a wider area. And because of the unique position of my constituency, I have taken extra time to listen to the differing views of people and communities within my constituency before expressing any outright opinion. I've attended the NHS public meetings, met with constituents and stakeholders, held street surgeries, and engaged in various forums to gather opinion. And my consultation response was balanced and tried to reflect those issues. Generally speaking, people from Coat Bridge want it to remain at the current site or nearby, and those from the Christon area, which encapsulates the various villages in the north of my constituency, an area that's been fighting for a health centre, to be fair, are comfortable with a move to Gap Kosh in the main, although there was some exceptions. But the most important and wider issue that the consultation raised was around health inequalities, which is why the government motion is so important. And I should say, it shows the Labour motion for what it is, shallow, simpl simplistic and scaremongering. Because in Coatbridge and Airdrie, the two Monklands towns have some of the most deprived areas in Scotland. Between them, they have nine areas in the most deprived. 5% by SIMD statistics. Would the member listen to this? This is across Scotland. Four of these on Coatbridge. If this is then increased to the most deprived 10%, the figure rises. Just a minute, just a minute, please, rises. Mr McGregor. I want to hear what Ms McGregor has to say. You've, a, you've got a chance and you're summing up. Mr McGregor, on Thank you, you President Officer. If this is then increased to the most deprived 10%, the figure rises to a staggering 28 areas, 14 in each. This poverty and deprivation that resulted from deindustrialisation in the 1980s under Conservative governments and which is being perpetuated by current failed UK government austerity policies has brought with it a whole host of health inequalities, from high rates of heart disease and other long-term health conditions to significant drug and alcohol-related harm. Monklands has been known as the sick man of Europe, a term that will be familiar to many of us. It may not be the intention, but removing a well-established hospital with an A&E from an area with such health inequalities and where people have less access to private cars would be regarded as elitists and decision makers giving a hammer blow to these communities. Now, that's not what I come into politics to do, and I know it's not what MD here came into politics to do. And as the motion outlines, the hospital needs to serve the Monklands area, and it's got to continue to be part of a plan to address these health inequalities, where slow but sure progress is being made by this government. The board and the engagement process have the duty to instill confidence that this will be the case. And as others, others have said, this generally has not been the case. Some aspects of the consultation were relatively good, and the meetings were responsive and professional. However, there was a waiting towards Gap Kosh as a preferred outcome, and I was disappointed to hear that only one Monklands resident was involved in the scoring. There should have been more information on the other central Monklands sites, for example at Gersheri, which was rejected due to poor road access. But these same roads would be the main ones to get folk from Coat Bridge to Gap Kosh. So I ask you how that makes any sense. Similarly, the current hospital has many positives, such as location and transport links, and I would like more information on other options around the land nearby and in building up the way. This seemed to be dismissed too easily. Presiding officer, this is a major decision, and I believe it would be best to start again and take into account all of the options, including looking at Gart Kosh again, but, but dealing with the concerns raised. But I'll finish on this point. In 2007, it was the SNP that saved the Monklands A&E from closure by Labour. Shameful proposed closure of an A&E in one of Scotland's most deprived area. 
It has been this government that has invested heavily in the site since. It was this government under Shona Robinson, its health secretary, that agreed the funding for a new hospital be, to be built. It's politicians like Alex Neil, Neil Gray and myself and our councillor colleagues who are scrutinising the proposals of the board and holding it to account. It's our candidate in the Cobridge South by-election who's standing on a strong platform to keep the Monkland Central. And People there, aren't fooled and there, by Mr. Labour's McGregor, stories Mr. anymore. McGregor, they know the Monkland is safe McGregor, in the hands of the SNP. Sit down. If you overrun your time, you cut other people out, no matter your passion. Mr Simpson, followed by Emma Harper, who will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Simpson. Uh, thank, thank you uh, very much. I was, I was thinking there that, that this, this was a, a very considered contribution from Fulton McGregor until, uh, until the end. Um, now it's an important debate uh, for the people I represent in central Scotland. For those of us who live in Lanarkshire, Monklands is one of our hospitals. I live in East Kilbride. Hairmyers is my local A&E, so when I fell off my bike a few years ago, that's where I went. But Monklands is just as much my hospital as Hairmyers, because there are specialisms there, like ear, nose and throat, and radiotherapy, that aren't available closer to home. It's Airdrie's hospital, but it's Lanarkshire's too. First of all, do we need a new hospital? No one's really arguing that the current one fits the bill for the 21st century. Second question is, where should it be? Now, when you propose to build a new hospital, there are always going to be strong views on where it should be. So it's vital that there's a robust, evidence-based process and that people's views are taken into account. There's been a consultation. That's now closed. The Health Board say the process was in line with Scottish Government guidance. They say the process to select those taking part in the consultation was formally agreed with the Scottish Health Council. There have been 13 public meetings attended by around 600 people. That's an average of 46 people a meeting. Now, I can guarantee that any of us here could rustle up more than 46 people to a public meeting around something so important. It doesn't sound very many people to me, and I have to wonder uh, how well publicised these meetings actually were. Um, I think the Minister should be taking a very close look um, at the consultation process that's been followed, um, because we need to be uh, absolutely certain that it was done the correct way. 37 sites were initially considered. Uh, various criteria, criteria were looked at. They had to be within North Lanarkshire on an area of at least 40 acres within the existing catchment area, suitable access, etc. Um, and any new hospital could not be built in a location that would mean Monkland's patients would choose to go to another hospital like Wishaw or Forth Valley. So really there are only three options. We've heard it. Building on the existing site, I personally think that's problematic um, and it would take 13 years. I don't think people would really want to wait that long. Or Gartkosh or Glen Mavis. Now, Gartkosh is further away from the current site than Glen Mavis. It's got a railway station, but if you live in Airdrie, you'd have to travel into Glasgow and back out to get there. It takes about an hour. Glen Mavis doesn't have a station, but there are a couple of nearby which shuttle buses could easily uh, connect to. Uh, to me, it's more convenient, and there's going to be a planned new link road. Thousands of houses are to be built uh, in, the, in the area. And that's why um, local politicians, including Airdrie's three Conservative councillors, support that site. Um, I think it's sensible, uh, but we're in an ongoing process. No decision has been made. The Health Board will meet at the end of November to decide their favoured option, and uh, they'll then have to pr produce an outline business case. The Board must follow due process. Um, that we have to be absolutely certain that due process has been followed. Um, enough serious concerns have been raised here today uh, that we must question whether that has been the case. We must get this decision right. Uh, it's got to be the right decision for the people of Monklands and the whole of Lanarkshire. Thank you very much. I call Emma Harper, last speaker in the open debate, moving to closing speeches after that. Ms Harper.
Thank you, President Officer. Um, I found it a wee bit difficult or a challenge to prepare for this afternoon's debate because I am not a, a resident in the area and I'm not as familiar with the area. But I was speaking this afternoon because we had a similar experience in Dumfries and Galloway when the new site was being chosen for the brand new fantastic facility which has been built in, uh, near Dumfries. But it's not very often that we're presented with a two-line motion for debate, so I was pleased to see a significantly more substantive, informative and positive amendment put forward by the government in the name of Clare Hawkey. The Scottish Government has been clear that it remains committed to robust evidence-based policy, evidence policy making as set out in the National Clinical Strategy. And I welcome plans to refurbish or replace the current university hospital at Monklands. So, yes, I will take an intervention. Please Monica make it Lennon. quick, though. I'm grateful to Emma Harper. Um, the government uh, amendment leaves the door open for the hospital to move out of uh, Monklands. Is that the case, Emma Harper? Emma Harper. Thank you for allowing me to clarify that. The motion does not allow any door to be open to allow the alternative site. So... I'm aware that uh, NHS Lanarkshire have a process of consultation which is underway and the board must absolutely consult, engage and listen to the patients, the outpatients and all the people and service users who will be, who will be using the new state-of-the-art facility. The Scottish Government time and time again has committed to the thinking that people should receive treatment as close to home as possible to promote safe, effective and person-centred care. Indeed, in the government amendment, this commitment is again reaffirmed. Presiding officer, the consultation is ongoing and the board is still going to evaluate all options and they're yet to decide on a preferred option, which will then be sent to the Scottish government for ministerial approval. Once the board has gone through this process and when it has sent its final uh, proposal to the government, it will then be subject, subjected to the national cl clinical, uh, clinical strategy. So the approach will ensure that all decisions are based on available evidence and will ensure that any decision is taken on the basis of proper and comprehensive public consultation. And I echo the words today regarding concerns about certain aspects of the consultation. It seems that on listening this afternoon that there may need to be a further review of the actual process and the scoring system and the engagement that has been undertaken by NHS Lanarkshire. And I would ask the government to consider whether this process might need to have some further investigation. So, Local people need to be assured that this SNP government will always focus on providing as many services as possible, as locally as possible. And I'm sure ministers will take into account all available information before coming to any decision. Presiding officer, all are in agreement that the Monklands Hospital needs to be upgraded. And speaking from my own experience, when I was working as a nurse in the old DGRI, I used to find it difficult moving around in rooms that were too small to manoeuvre. The equipment and supplies couldn't be accessed easily and we needed to carry out bedside care in a space that just didn't work. So the upgrading of the hospital or building a brand new hospital will allow better modern patient care to be achieved. So I absolutely recognise the need for hospitals to be upgraded and refurbished across the whole of Scotland when necessary to meet the state-of-the-art needs of the 21st century. So, presiding officer, my colleague Alec Neil, who is the constituency MSP for the area, has been proactive in his campaign to replace the current building. And I would like to join him in expressing disappointment with the Labour Party, who have launched a separate petition on this matter. Right. And I would like to support the best Thank process you. moving forward. Thank you very much. You made your position clear. Uh, closing speech is tight. Four minutes, Mr Whittle. Closing for Conservatives. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm uh, pleased to be closing this debate on behalf of the Scottish Conservatives and thank Labour for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Uh, as we would have expected, when it comes to health and the delivery of health services, it's been a passionate debate with MSPs, especially local MSPs, quite rightly rallying to the cause of their local constituents and in some cases putting partisan politics uh, to the side. I would say, however, it would be remiss not to mention the fact there happens to be a local by-election tomorrow in the area. Call me an old sceptic that perhaps politics is not as removed from this topic as perhaps it should be. 
Having said that, what I often think is, is in, in these debates are often framed in the wrong way. We, we discuss bricks and mortar when we should be discussing delivery of services. However, what this debate highlights is when it comes to bricks and mortar, it is crucial that when we establish, uh, we establish them, it is in the right place for the good of the whole community that we serve, ensuring that no part of the community is disadvantaged. And Alison Harris pointed out that, that Glasgow could benefit from a gap cost option to the detriment of those uh, in Monklands. What has also been highlighted once again for me uh, in this afternoon's debate is the NHS's continuing inability to engage in a satisfactory public consultation process. This has been brought to the attention of the Health and Sport Committee again and again, and it's an issue that I think we must address going forward. Change in the delivery of service is an inevitability, and it would be much less of a painful process if proper protocols for open, transparent consultation were implemented from the outset, led by healthcare professionals focusing on service delivery. And I think in this instance, from across the chamber, uh, we heard from Miles Biggs and Elaine Smith and Neil Finlay, passionate, uh, a passionate address from Alex Neil, uh, uh, talking about uh, misleading uh, and being economical with the truth. I think it's obvious that the consultation process relating to the siting of the replacement of Monklands Hospital has been at best flawed. As I say, according to some members, there is a significant conspiratorial element to the process with the outcomes predetermined, it seems trying to lead the process to a specific conclusion. It leads me to the consideration, or otherwise, of the practicalities in accessing services. And the Monkland, Monkland situation is by no means unique in this. And I fully accept that change uh, is an inevitability uh, as services develop. But surely, as part of that study, must be, the, must be cognizant of transport infrastructure and how moving a service may impact on those relying on that service. In Ayrshire and Arne, for example, there is a plan under consideration to change the way in which certain cancer treatments are delivered. The basic plan has merit, and it's worth uh, considering as a potential solution. Right up until you recognise, in some cases, this will mean changing from an air hospital appointment to one at Cross House Hospital, and a journey by public transport in excess of three hours for some, some patients to get that treatment with the same journey on the return. So I'm glad that infrastructure has been raised uh, 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 in this debate because in considering and evaluating how we may better deliver service, it uh, seemed to me a core principle in that decision should be how those in need would access that service. And as has also already been said, we all need to be cognizant of those who deliver that, that service as well and their travel to work. After all, Deputy Presiding Officer, delivery of a public service, especially one as critical as the NHS, should have the service users as the key element of that decision. And finally, a uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, the question has to be asked. In the two decades that health has been devolved to this parliament, how has Monk Monklands been allowed to deteriorate to such a poor state that it actually has to be replaced in the first place? Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, and for keeping to your time. I call on Claire Hockey to close the government minister tight four minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, and I can assure members that the concerns raised today have been noted by ministers. And I want to reiterate ministers' clear expectations that NHS boards must come to a robust evidence-based decision in such cases, in line with national guidance and best practice, and is meaningfully informed by the views of local stakeholders. We agree that all efforts must be made to move work on this important development forward, whilst meaningfully engaging with and ensuring the confidence of local people and their representatives. I don't have time. I have already explained that this is the reason ministers have asked the Director General for Health and Social Care and the Chief Executive of NHS Lanarkshire to discuss the need for the board to undertake further engagement and consultation with affected communities on the proposed options for replacing or refurbishing Monklands Hospital. On a wider point, local people can be reassured that this government will always focus our approach on providing as many services as locally as possible. That is our record in government and it stands in stark contrast to that of the previous Labour-led administration. While Richard Leonard's motion calls on Parliament to build a new Monklands Hospital, I think it's appropriate to conclude by reflecting on what this government has done for local people since 2007 in comparison with what Labour delivered when in power. In the 2007 SNP manifesto, we promised to keep vital health services local and reverse the decisions to close Aaron Monklands A&E. Not a Labour Party manifesto commitment. 
The very first act of Nicola Sturgeon as Health Secretary in June 2007 was to come to this Parliament and announce we were overturning the previous Labour-led administration's decision to close the highly valued a &E departments at Monklands and Air Hospitals. And since their decision to save the a &E at Monklands, it has provided much needed emergency capacity, seeing more than 700,000 attendances. And we've not just maintained this service, we've invested in it and enhanced it with the emergency medical uh, consultants up 300.301% uh, from eight to 32 whole-time equivalent posts in NHS Lanarkshire under this government. Indeed, this government's support for NHS Lanarkshire includes an increase in the Health Board's budget in cash terms by £469.6 uh, million. All staff up 16.6% or 1,441 whole-time equivalents, with consultants up 81.4% and qualified nurses and midwives up 19.3% or 646.1 whole-time equivalents. In closing, uh, as I have said, we welcome and are supportive of NHS Lanarkshire bringing forward proposals to refurbish or replace Monklands Hospital for the benefit of local people. However, given the range of services required on site to support a core a and &E, one might wonder, had the previous Labour-led administration's decision to close the a and &E at Monklands not been overturned by this government, whether there would be a hospital there to refurbish now or not at all? Thank you. And I now call on if I could be heard over certain people, uh, I call on Monica Lennon to wind up. Five minutes, please. I'm sorry. Labour. Thank you, Presiding Officer. There is a simple choice before us today. Support the Labour motion to keep the University Hospital Monklands in the Monklands community or support the SNP amendment, which does leave the door open to take the hospital out of the Monklands community. I think we all need to understand that. Scottish Labour is clear in welcoming investment in a new state-of-the-art hospital for Monklands and we will fight to keep the Monklands in the Monklands community. So what an utter disgrace it is, hold on, it's an utter disgrace that Fulton McGregor, the SNP MSP for Coatbridge in Christon, has described this endeavour as shallow. He may have grown up next to the Monklands Hospital, but I think after today, he'll find it hard to look his neighbours in the eye. Because we've heard that the public consultation process has been farcical. It's been heavily criticised by my good friend, Alec Neil, who says that it has, been, it has led to a stupid decision to make Gartkosh the preferred site. I'm happy to let Fulton McGregor in at, at that point. So Mr I, McGregor. I described the motion as shallow because there was nothing to it. The government motion, the government motion has got a lot more to it and you should be supporting that. Ms Lennon. I, I think we've heard enough. I'll, I'll repeat again that the motion is simple. The motion is to keep the Monklands in the Monklands. Briefly, because I'll have to make some progress. M Myles, my, you've got to be called. Mr Briggs, hold your horses. You've got to be called first. Mr Briggs. Thank you, Deputy <laughs> President Officer. I think this is where we think Labour are actually confused today, because are you saying the only option is to rebuild on the current site? That's your policy, given the fact that we've just had a consultation on lots of other opportunities and pathways. That's are too long that an forward. intervention, sorry. Ms Lennon. <laughs> right, I want to make some progress. We've said enough about the consultation. I think the Minister's got plenty of notes to, to take away. But in some serious points, moving the hospital away from Monklands out to Gartkosh will in increase travel costs for, for many staff who live in the local area, especially those who are on the lowest wages. And Alison Johnson, I think, helpfully set out that in general terms in Scotland, we have inadequate uh, levels of public transport. And she also talked about the downside of uh, longer patient journeys. These are fundamental issues. Um, there's nothing in the proposals to move the hospital to Gartkosh that would improve accessibility and journey times for patients. Um, Alex Cole Hamilton um, made some really good points when he talked about hospitals being central to the fabric of communities. And what, what, what looks good on plan isn't always best for the people in the area. So this is not a paper exercise. We can't afford to get this wrong. I support the Scottish Government's principles on town centre first. I hope the Scottish Government won't abandon those principles over the Monklands. And if the flagship Queen Elizabeth Southern General University Hospital can be built 
on the site of the former Southern General in Glasgow. Why isn't it possible to build a new Monklands at the Monklands site? Rebuilding on the same site is not without its challenges, but it is entirely possible because we have the expertise and design teams here in Scotland to deliver state-of-the-art hospitals. There's no reason why we can't achieve that in the Monklands. A lot of attention has been given to the cost savings which could be gained from rebuilding on a new site at Gapkosh. But not enough focus has been given to what would be lost by leaving the Monklands. Elaine Smith already mentioned the Maggie Centre and the Lanarkshire Beatson, for example. Both state-of-the-art facilities, less than five years old, and which cost tens of millions of pounds and are co-located there. What about these facilities? And we've heard a lot about health inequality, and that's important because in Monklands, we've got high levels of deprivation and some of the worst health inequalities and low levels of care ownership. Moving the hospital out of the Monklands will only make this worse. The long-term advantage of the hospital remaining in the Monklands are significant, and they haven't been adequately reflected in the benefits and financial analysis. In conclusion, presiding officer, we are forced to bring this motion to Parliament today to speak out against the decision to move the Monklands out of the Monklands, the ramifications of which would be felt for years to come amid deep concerns and public criticism on where the hospital should be built. The choice before the Parliament today is clear. We either give support to the decision to move the Monklands Hospital out of the community for decades, or we can give an unwavering commitment to the people of Lanarkshire that the current hospital should remain in the community where it belongs. And that means keeping the Monklands in the Monklands area. Thank you. And that concludes the debate to keep the Monklands in Monklands. And I'm going to have a terribly brief pause before we move on to the next item of business. There's no time in hand. I mean, in these short debates, I have to ask members just to get their seats and get ready right away. No wee friendly chit chats. or unfriendly chit-chats. 